So Kyler Murray won Offensive Rookie of the Year, and it was much deserved. I mean, you could have made an argument for A.J. Brown or Josh Jacobs, but I think that especially if you put positional importance into the equation, there's no doubt about it, Murray would win. If you don't, I think he still has a pretty fair argument just because, you know, Jacobs didn't finish the whole season, and A.J. Brown was great. Again, there's several guys you can make an argument for, but I thought Murray was fantastic for a rookie season, and I'm really looking forward to seeing where he goes from here. Usually when grading a rookie quarterback, I less focus on what you do wrong and more focus on what you do right. I want to see what you do well, and then I, I sort of just have faith that as you get older, you'll be able to fix the mistakes or at least fix a good portion of the mistakes. So that way, you'll just mostly be doing what you do well. And one of the things I thought Murray did very well was a play like this, where it's going to be a cover three zone, and that's the receiver that he's going to want to hit. You know, it's a route over the middle. There will be a gap in coverage. So that is definitely where Murray is going to look right when this ball is snapped. And as you see, when the ball is snapped, his receiver is cutting in in between the defensive back and the linebackers. There is a window there, but the problem is that there's also a Seattle linebacker in the area who could absolutely take away this throw, and you know, this is how interceptions happen. You try to thread the needle here, you throw it a bit too low, the linebacker jumps up and intercepts it. That absolutely happens, so it's a dangerous throw if Murray were to make it right now. However, Murray doesn't have to make it right now. Instead, watch just his little bit of patience right here. He waits just a split second, then makes the throw, and that's all he had to do. Just good patience on that play, I thought, and just that's just a good football IQ play. I think Murray's football IQ for such a young guy was surprisingly high. I thought that he did a very good job of making reads and understanding situations, understanding on a play like that, I don't have to throw the ball right now. I can wait just a split second. The window will be more open, so I should do it then. I also really like this play. It's a pretty simple concept and oftentimes a quarterback doesn't have too much to do with a play like this but I actually thought that Murray did a great job on this play what's going to happen is that it's going to be a little play action and then what they're going to do is have the number one receiver just run out to block that Cleveland Brown player over there then Fitzgerald will run up to the top half of the screen Murray hits him Fitz runs up towards the sideline tries to gain as many yards as possible before another Cleveland player runs over and knocks him out of bounds. So again, you're probably thinking, just looking at it on paper, well, what is Murray going to have to do with this play? I mean, it's a screen pass. Screen passes are easy. And yes, they are easy in the sense of it's going to be a completion no matter what. But watch how quickly Murray is going to get the ball and then get it over to Fitzgerald. And just it's a perfect executed play by Murray. You know, fakes the handoff, quickly gets it over, and makes a perfect throw so Fitzgerald could make the catch in stride and run down the field and gain as many yards as possible. Every split second means so much on a play like that, so the fact that he was able to quickly get it over to Fitz really was the difference in probably three or four yards right there. And with the way that Arizona likes to run plays like that, it's definitely important for Murray to be good at plays like that, and he absolutely is. This next play was kind of a funky play in a lot of ways. It was kind of a weird play, but... At the same time, it's I think it's a good example of showing that Murray isn't just some fish out of water, but he absolutely sort of is able to realize what's going on in real time and make some smart decisions. Like, what's going to happen is that, so okay, there's a stack formation right there, two receivers on each other, and you also see that there's a defensive back further deep, and look at how he's telling a teammate of his, hey, get closer. He's trying to get somebody to get closer because this is zone coverage and he realizes there are two receivers in his area, but there's nobody else in terms of defenders in his area. So he won't be able to cover both of them. He needs some help right here. He's trying to get help, but nobody really is looking at him right now. I don't think he's loud enough for anybody to hear him. So this is part of the communication is an important thing in football. And this is going to be a good news situation for Arizona because they're running play action and they have Fitzgerald running that route right there and so it's going to be in a gap in coverage and also with the play action the linebackers might be a little bit out of position so this is definitely a pretty good situation for Arizona but let's be honest Josh Rosen doesn't notice this situation happening Josh Rosen probably is just trying to focus on the play and you know focus on making the play action look believable but Murray He's aware enough that he's looking around and trying to figure out what's happening, just like everybody else on the field. And so because of the play action, a linebacker is going to move in, and right now, Fitzgerald is going to be open. But not just that, watch this throw from Murray. He, it's in the air for like half a second, you know? He so quickly gets it over to Fitz right there. It's just I, That's one of the things I love about Murray, is just his arm talent. His arm talent 
it looks amazing even by NFL standards. It's it's very impressive. So absolutely a great play there by by Murray, I thought. Again, also a mistake by the 49ers defense, but you know what? Murray took advantage of that mistake, and that's what you do in football. This next play was just almost weird in a sense. It was just a bizarre play. It was a fun one, though. What's going to happen is that, so Seattle has three players on the bottom half of the screen, basically closer to the center on the bottom half of the screen than the top half of the screen, which essentially forces that the center, right guard, and right tackle are all going to have one-on-one -on -one matchups, just given the fact that it's you know, three on three, there's no tight ends in the game, the halfbacks on the top half of the screen, so it's going to be one-on-one -on -one matchups, and that is not going to work out too well for Arizona. As you see, there's pressure right off the edge, Murray is in trouble, you can make an argument that this is Murray's fault to some degree, he didn't get the halfback over to his right, that's probably what he should have done, just give himself some extra protection. This is something that you see Josh Rosen struggle with a lot last year. He was really having a hard time with figuring out how to protect himself. It seemed like every time a team blitzed, they would get a free blitzer. It wasn't just on the offensive line, it was on the quarterback. Here, this is partially on Murray, also partially on the offensive line. I mean, there were one-on-one -on -one matchups, but with three one-on-one -on -one matchups, the chances are a defender is going to win it. However, this isn't me talking about a bad play for Murray. This is actually still going to be me kind of talking about a good play. Because for Murray right here, what you would expect him to do is just step up in the pocket and make a throw right now. But he doesn't want to. He doesn't really love any of the throws that he would make right now. And he doesn't want to have to step up in the pocket just to give himself an extra second. So watch how he's going to step back and then do a spin move and get around that Seattle defender. And that's just insane right now. And now he has a guy who he can maybe make this throw to. He throws it up and gives him a chance. It isn't able to be complete. Maybe if it was a slightly better throw, it was complete. Maybe if it was a slightly less good defense, it would have been complete. Or a better catch, it would have been complete. Either way, you could make the argument. But I thought that that was just a tremendous play of getting around that defender. I thought that part was awesome. There's some bad in that play, some good in that play. But as a whole, I thought it was a pretty good play for Murray. And definitely, that is one of the things about Murray's game is he's not just a pocket passer. He is a guy who can run with the football. And as we're seeing in today's NFL... The ability to run as a quarterback is becoming so much more and more important. The days of the pocket passer haven't completely gone away yet, but they're definitely starting to go away. And one of the things I really like about Cliff Kingsbury is he says, oh, okay, I have this generational talent perhaps who can also run the football really well. All right, well, then I'm going to have him run the football. Like on this play, what's going to happen is that Murray is going to fake a handoff, and then the two other Cardinals who are currently in the backfield are going to run out to block those two Cleveland Browns players right over there. And so what's interesting about this play is that, as you see, Murray is still at the position where he could potentially keep the ball himself, or he could give it to the halfback. And if you look at that Cleveland Brown edge rusher right over there, he has moved in. Now, for Murray on this one, his job is, if the edge rusher stays further to the top half of the screen, then you simply just hand the ball off to your halfback. But since he's clearly crashed in to where he could potentially take away a handoff, now you keep it yourself, run up to the top half of the screen, and try to get around him. That's what he's going to do, but the question becomes, does he have the speed to get around him? And that answer is an absolute yes. Watch how he just runs by everybody and picks up a huge gain. It was pretty well blocked as well, but just that speed is what changed everything. His speed in open space, that's how he was able to gain so many yards on that play. That's so important when you're going to run option plays like that, is to have a quarterback who has that breakout speed, who can accelerate quickly, and that's what Murray can do. Like, this play is an even better example, I think, because what's going to happen is it's pretty similar to the last time, you know, he's going to... It's going to be the option play where he doesn't hand it off to the halfback, keeps it himself, and runs up to the top half of the screen... But the interesting player to watch is going to be that 49er right over there. Because watch how he just completely gets by his block and is in a position right now where he could potentially make a tackle on Murray, you know? He took the angle where he cut a little bit further in from that Arizona player, so he's gone too far in. Now he, the, the Arizona blocker is like, okay, I can't really get over and block you. But now the question becomes, was the angle just a little bit too early to that now I can't run over and actually make a tackle on Murray? That is the question. For a lot of guys, they would still be able to make this tackle, but... A lot of guys aren't going up against Kyler Murray, and watch how he just runs by him. Even when a play breaks down like that, Murray has the speed where he was able to get all the way inside the 10, and honestly, if there was a better block downfield, that's probably a touchdown. He really is one of those, you know, you think dual threat quarterbacks, he's definitely on that short list. Uh, I thought that his rookie season was fantastic. Again, 
it is just a rookie season. We've seen plenty of guys have great rookie seasons and then that ends up being their peak, whereas we've also seen plenty of guys have poor rookie seasons and then go on to have great careers. But the reality is, the chances are if you have a great rookie season, you're more likely to be great than if you had a poor rookie season. So it doesn't mean everything, but it does mean something. So that's what I think of Kyler Murray's rookie season. If I had to give it a grade, I'd probably give it, I mean, it's an A+. plus. What else could you ask for him, honestly? So, so yeah, that's what I thought of Kyler Murray and his rookie season. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and of course, as always, thanks for watching.